I'm going to do a short video on my 92 Dodge, uh, what is it, D150, uh, something like that, pickup truck. It's four-wheel drive. There it is sitting out in the driveway. The speedometer started working intermittently. Then it wouldn't work at all. Not only the speedometer, but the odometer didn't work either. Uh, I have the shop manual for this. And I took the cluster out and I took the speedometer out of the cluster. Inside the speedometer cluster, there's an integrated circuit made by ITT. It's a UAF 2115 made by ITT in Germany, it says on the chip. Uh, I suspect that could be bad. I got one from China, uh, just to be sure, so that when I finally do figure out how to test this thing, it, I'll have any parts that I'll need. Here is an L connector that comes onto the uh, printed circuit board in the instrument cluster. It's this pin right over here that goes over to where the speedometer plugs on. This top pin uh, is ground. The next pin down is your 12 volts. And the last pin down is the speedometer drive signal. Uh, basically, when you disconnect this all and just hook the 12 volts up to the speedometer cluster, uh, this pin here is pulled up to 5 volts. If you drop it down and go back and forth at a certain rate, the speedometer will start to read. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. But anyway, here's the back of the cluster. So, if it looks like yours. Oh, one, one word of warning on this cluster. It will not come out until you take the top and bottom cover off the steering wheel column to free up this indicator for uh, park, neutral, drive, reverse. It's on a little spring-loaded thread here, and there's a little tiny metal hook that goes down onto way when you shift the, the truck, you'll see where the shifter operates this little uh, tang that this goes on to. One thing to make sure you get that back right and take it off right so you don't break the string taking this apart. Because then you won't have an indicator showing what gear you're in. Okay, back to the cluster. I figured out how to make this thing run. I basically have applied 12 volts to this. The top one is ground, the bottom one is 12 volts. Here we have 12 volts on my little homemade power supply. Uh, the bottom one, which is my white clip here, I'm feeding a signal in, uh, it's a square wave I'm feeding in, and it's right now at 122 hertz, which is 122 uh, pulses per second. Uh, I'm feeding it in from this Tektronics function generator. I'm using a square wave. It'll work on a sine wave as well. But you don't want to have too strong a signal and damage the IC inside here. I suspected that just taking this whole mess apart and putting it back together would probably bring it into working due to this not plugged onto the circuit board on the dash or the dash plugs wrong or one of the crimps inside the plug going to the connector that plugs onto the dash circuit board, the cluster circuit board I should say. But anyway, this little doodad here, you can see that I've got it at 60 miles an hour right now roughly. And you can see the odometer ticking. Now, if I turn up the frequency, let's see, we turned it up, I think it's around 200 hertz. This truck's going 100 miles an hour. Let's put it at 100 miles an hour. And the frequency is 210 hertz. It's reading 100 miles an hour, and you can see that odometer is really starting to tick away fast. Well, the needle's covering. I'll back off the speed so it doesn't cover it up. See, it's at four tenths and five tenths. And we can turn the frequency of this thing right down to any speed you want. For example, 20 miles an hour is 37 hertz or 36 hertz. But anyway. I thought I'd make a little video on this, on how to test this particular speedometer cluster. These things probably sell for a fortune if you can even get one. Uh, right now I'm going to stop the power supply and turn this stuff off. And I'm going to disconnect this. Now that I know this is working, I don't need to keep it here in the shop. 
I can bring it, I can put it back in the cluster and put it back in the truck. Here's the little circuit board on the side, and there's that IC. Oh, let's see. If I can just hold this, use my finger to point. There's the IC, and there's the new one in the box right there. It turns out I'm not going to need it, but it's, it was only like four bucks, so why not have it on hand? And there's the little, it's like a stepper motor that operates the odometer. And this IC is designed just for running a, a speedometer and the stepper motor. The speedometer is actually a, a meter movement. And when I put my VTVM on the coil for this, I got an old Heathkit VTVM. It applies like a fraction of 1.5 volts on this. It brought it up to about, uh, I forget what it was. It was something like 50 or 60 miles an hour. But anyway, the cluster seems to be working okay. And if you do find that one of these is bad, you may find that that integrated circuit on here is bad. And again, you can find these on eBay. This one came directly from China. And again... The number for that IC is UAF2115. I'm going to pause this and go out and show you what the dashboard looks like with the stuff all ripped out. Turns out to be a beautiful day. We've got a six foot high snowbank out here. There's been mice and stuff living in it during the winter. It hasn't been running for several months due to the speedometer. I refuse to drive it with no speedometer. But here's all the pieces. Here's that uh, L, L connector right here, and that pin that controls the speedometer speed is this white with the orange tracer wire here at the end. And then there's another pin here for other gauges and lights and so forth. That's basically just these two plugs that plug into that circuit board on the back of the cluster. And as far as the little hook for the park neutral drive reverse, Let's see, it's on the shift handle somewhere down in here. Well, anyway, when I go to put it back, I'll find it. I'll find it. It will line up somewhere. And there's the top and bottom covers of the speedometer. Uh, steering wheel column, rather. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, I'm back out in the 92 Dodge four-wheel drive 318 pickup truck that I took the cluster apart on because the speedometer and odometer weren't working. I mentioned that there's a little place where that hook on the thread of this goes. Here's the, here's the little hook. I can get my fingers to work. Here's the little hook. You can see it moves the hot neutral drive and so forth pointer. It actually hooks on. Oh, this thing is rolling. It actually hooks on right down in here. You can see that right there. There's two slots that can go in. Don't ask me which one it goes in. I'll try one, see how they line up, and then I'll try the other if it's wrong. But anyway, I'm going to put this puppy back together. A lot of things I took off, but I've seen much worse. Okay, put this baby bat in park, and I'm gonna start putting this cluster back in. Okay, I'm back at putting this cluster that had a bad, well, the, the odometer and speedometer weren't reading. It started out intermittent and then it wouldn't work at all. Took it all apart and tested it, and there are some pin plugs on the back of the circuit board. I soldered the pins right to the circuit board and then I put the plug, the socket from the harness down on those pins. I didn't solder anything directly onto the cluster so it can be removed. Not that, well, whatever. Uh, just for your information, here's that thing I was talking about with the shifter. Pop neutral drive. Go down through them to see. If I pull all the way, it goes past the, the low, the one. In pack, it's there. Reverse, neutral, drive, second, first. That's perfect. And it turns out that the correct spot was down on the lower of the slots. If I get a better view of that. 
Yeah, you can see it pretty good now. Just that little thing. And it has this handy little... Oh, I can't get it on there. It has this handy little string that hangs down. So I guess when you're pulling this out, if you fortunate enough to find this string hanging. Where is that thing? Oh, I got us up to 57 zoom. That won't work. Okay, we're back at 1x Butterfingers. Okay, here's that cute little string that's hanging down. If you pull on this, you will pull that out of that slot for removal of the spawner cluster. Okay, that's just a heads up on that. There's not a lot left to do here. Uh, the dashboard, I, I cracked it. The cover here for the dash. I cracked it in several places, taking it out. I resin bonded it all back together. Seems to be good. I still got these guys up here to deal with, putting it back in. And some of the clips are broken off, but hey, there's going to be enough to hold it in place. And there's this little light up here, courtesy light, and there's a plug, little socket here. They covered it with that foam stuff that deteriorates. It's the stuff they make speakers and other things of, out of. And you touch it, and it's like goop. It sticks to your fingers. The only thing that will take it off is naphtha, a lighter fluid. Nasty stuff. Anyway, you can see where it gooped onto the uh, plastic in behind there. Anyway, back to putting this together, and we'll take it from there.